Vitamin K. Don't rush into vitamin K supplementation as many advise. Hi, I'm Dr. James Machino. You know, there's, there's two naturally occurring forms of vitamin K. There's vitamin K1 that we get from plant foods like dark green leafy vegetables. Then there's vitamin K2, which is made by the bacteria that normally live in the large intestine. And both types of vitamin K are really important. Vitamin K is sort of this collective group of compounds is vitally important for normal blood clotting. And so if you were to cut yourself a little and so that you don't bleed to death, vitamin K gets into the act by helping the body make certain clotting proteins that are required so that you can form a clot so you don't bleed to death. On the other hand, where people have high risk for abnormal clots to form, let's say they've got a faulty mitral valve, they just had a heart attack or, or a stroke that was due to abnormal clotting, or they've had uh, deep vein thrombosis, they might be put on Coumadin or, Coumadin or Warfarin. These are drugs that inhibit the action of vitamin K so that, that your blood can't clump together so easily. So it, it has an anticoagulant effect by inhibiting the vitamin K action. On the other hand, if you inhibit it too much, there's a risk of hemorrhagic stroke or, or a hemorrhage somewhere else in the body. So you, it, it requires very careful monitoring when you're on those drugs. And so I don't like the whole idea of playing with vitamin K supplementation. There's too much at stake in terms of the hemodynamics of how blood clotting behavior works. So um, even if a person's on Coumadin or Warfarin, you know, they're told not to eat vitamin K containing foods because it would actually counter the effect of the drug. That's how much of an effect vitamin K has on this important piece of physiology. Vitamin K has other functions, by the way. It's required to make uh, one of the proteins in your bones to prevent bone density. This protein's called osteocalcin. And vitamin K seems to be able to help to inhibit calcium from being laid down in the artery wall. So it may have an important effect on preventing atherosclerosis. So the Rotterdam study did show this. But for my money, the best way to ensure your vitamin K status is to eat dark green leafy vegetables. Have at least one a day. And then you may want to take a probiotic supplement to make sure you have enough of the friendly bacteria that can make vitamin K and biotin. And you might want to have some fer fermented foods that are functional foods like you know yogurt and, and other fer fermented soy products that have more uh, naturally occurring vitamin K and, and, and live bacteria. And you may want to even take a, a prebiotic uh, like FOS or inulin with some digestive enzymes. They, they help, they become the food that the, that the friendly bacteria use to foster their own growth. Uh, if you are on an antibiotic, remember you should always take a probiotic with it to, to support the growth of the friendly bacteria because the antibiotic will be killing some of the friendly bacteria and that could inhibit your vitamin K nutritional status over time. If you're on Coumadin or Warfarin, you, you follow your doctor's orders to the letter. Um, so, Because your clotting behavior is a very critical part of your health. If you have abnormal clots, that can be life-threatening. If you have too, if you thin your blood too much and vitamin K can't work at all, then you can have a hemorrhage, which is also life-threatening. So this balance is really vital. That's why I don't really like vitamin K supplements. Better to get it from food and probiotic supplementation, fermented foods that have live bacterial cultures. Anyway, click on the, the link to read my review article on vitamin K so you really understand it uh, to the letter. How much your body needs, where to get it from, what are the drug nutrient interactions, all of that stuff that's really important to your long-term health. Now remember that at machinohealth.com you'll see my other research review papers, you'll see footage from my live professional seminars, and uh, also downloads and resources I've created. They're all there for free to help you lead a long, healthy, functional life. My research review papers and teaching materials are complete with all the scientific references, so you'll see you're only getting evidence-based information from me on any health topic that you're looking for. So you should make machinohealth.com an ongoing, reliable resource of health and wellness information for both you and your family. Thanks so much for watching.